Anirudh and in this video I will explain transformer design using cadence and run a EMX simulation on that. Uh, so the topic of the talk is on chip transformer design using 28 nanometer bulk CMOS. That is the technology I will be using in this video. And I will give a brief introduction on transformer design in uh, CMOS process. So as you would imagine, a transformer is a bulky thing which you would see outside of your houses. Uh, that is true, that is for high voltage applications. But the transformer we are designing is extremely small in size and it comes on a chip. So you can imagine how small this is compared to the transformers you would see outside in daily life. And what is the motivation behind using a transformer on chip? Uh, the motivation is quite simple. A transformer can be viewed as uh, a single-ended to differential converter and it is essential for radio frequency integrated circuits or millimeter wave applications as you would be hearing. And the main problem here is transformers work at high frequency and you would need to use electromagnetic solvers to solve for the field equations. And these 3D field solvers are inconvenient and take a high time to run and they are not of practical utility for a circuit designer uh, we need compact models that will help us intuitively design a transformer as per our needs and this is not the topic of the talk however this is uh, interesting research problem and moving forward this is the standard equivalent circuit of a transformer as you would have seen uh, you have a primary side on the left with a voltage V1 and a current I1 with, uh, with it just drives an inductor of self-inductance value L1 and on the secondary also it is quite similar you have an inductor of self-inductance L2 and a current I2 and a voltage V2 is applied at the terminals and the key difference here is there is a coupling factor K that results in a mutual inductance M between the primary coils and here these dots indicate the direction of the current flowing inwards okay so if you have a dot on top it means the current enters the terminal from the top and that is considered to be the plus terminal of the inductor and these two are positively coupled since the dots are along the same direction uh, dots are on the same side and the current flows in the same terminal and so the voltage equation can be written in this form v1 is l1 di1 by dt plus m di2 by dt and similarly v2 also can be written in the same way and uh, the key thing to note here is this m can be related to the coupling factor k which we call as a mutual coupling coefficient and that is m is k equal to k times square root l1 l2 and this k is less than or equal to 1, k can be either positive or negative. Typical on-chip transformers have k ranging from 0 0.7 to 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Uh, that depends on the specific topology as I would go on in, uh, in the f due course of this presentation, I would be explaining what type of k's you get with several topologies. And this is an idealized version of a transformer used for hand calculation. However, there are several non idealities linking these transformers uh, or we implemented in reality. The first one is series resistance. Every potential you tap would be associated with the series resistance that degrades the performance. Then the second most obvious factor that will influence the performance of a transformer at high frequency is this parasitic coupling capacitances. And another key a factor for a transformer is uh, the self resonant frequency the self resonant frequency of any inductor or transformer is defined as the frequency at which the net inductance value is zero so a typical inductor has a self resonant frequency of the order of several gigahertz a typical 1 nano inductance has a self resonant frequency of about 40 giga uh, some trans there are obviously the self resonant frequency of a transformer is expected to be much lower thus it is a interesting trade off between what values you would choose on the primary side and the secondary side 
versus what coupling factor you get versus the self resonant frequencies and uh, with the introduction of non idealities in models you cannot intuitively design a circuit so you would need compact models and uh, so now i'll move on to the section on topologies basically on chip transformers broadly and most generally used can be classified into three topologies the first being the tap transformer second interleaved and third is the stack transformer a uh, tap transformer has typically this structure uh, you have one pair of coils at the center and this other pair of coil is wound around the sec second uh, the first one and uh, you can basically view this as a nested sort of a transformer with the primary one being completely in the secondary one and uh, i forgot to mention that the transformer works on the key principle of uh, magnetic flux linkage so the better and better you tend to link the magnetic flux the better your coupling is going to be so in this case as we would see later there is significant leakage leading to a lower coupling then we have the interleave transformer so interleave transformer you wind a prime you wind a turn of the primary then immediately you wind a, so say a turn of the secondary as shown so this thing in white is the secondary this thing in black is the primary so these are interleaved uh, topologies these have medium to low range of coupling and stack transformers offer the highest coupling because the primary is exactly overlapped with the secondary this leads to extremely high flux link flux linkage leading to extremely high coupling between the primary and the secondary now uh, we'll compare across topologies though it is completely impossible to comment on whether one transformers works in all the situations obviously that comment cannot be made uh, the use of a particular topology is a sole function of the circuit application the frequency the requirements etc and non idealities as mentioned before results in trade off and uh, uh, there is a generalized comparison uh, you can view this as some sort of just a guiding light a uh, tap transformer has a high area uh, as you would see here and has a low coupling coefficient and its self resonant frequency is high meaning that it can work decently up to high frequencies of interest and uh, the interleave transformer as you would see has um, performance in between the tap and the stack transformer the stack transformer has extremely low area and is compact and has a high coupling coefficient however its self resonant frequency is extremely low because of uh, severe parasitics at every node now we move on to the section of a balance this is basically a single ended to differential converter highly used in rf applications and uh, one way of viewing a balance is it is a one is to root two transformer uh, so you would need we would have observed that transformers have uh, integer number of turns on the primary and secondary but in this case you have a one is to square root two turns and as i would show later on it is very interesting to construct such a topology and uh, several topologies of balance exist in literature the first one being transformer balance which is a prime interest of this talk and the second one is the marchand balance Uh, you can implement another interesting form of a balance using two transistors one in common gate other one in common source configuration uh, that is an active balance the key requirements of a balance are typically you should have low phase and amplitude imbalance between the 0 and 180 degree output signals the output could also be the input uh, and vice versa and you need to have a low insertion loss typical insertion loss of balance range in 1 to 2 db at rf and you would also need wide band performance so here are some of the references the first three are literature papers 
and the last two are texts. Uh, now I'll quickly dive into designing a transformer using 28, 28 nanometer CMOS. So I have already designed uh, this transformer. The way I have designed is quite simple. You take an inductor uh, in 28 nanometer and wait, you just take a normal inductor and then you would simply place the inductor and the way to design a transformer is you would essentially this is a since this is a stack topology you would place two inductors exactly on top of each other that will give you a one is to one transformer however since i am implementing a balance uh, the key idea is you would need to implement a one is to root two transformer so uh, from elementary circuit theory you would know that implementing a one is to root two transformer is extremely hard you cannot construct a 1 is to root 2, you cannot wind root 2 number of turns or anything. So, what we do is we take some inductance value. Uh, I think this is around 500 pico Henry. And the secondary inductance is going to be roughly root 2 times this, which is about 700 pico Henry uh, in this case. And you would place them such that the flux linkage is optimal. You would see that since this is a stack topology, the flux linkage is maximum. This uh, layer in black as you would see is made of the uh, topmost layer in 28 nanometer technology and is termed AP. This crossover is made in metal 9 and uh, you would see th this is the primary, this black one, the one made on AP. This secondary one is made on metal 9 with crossover in metal 8. This has a center tap. So the center tap of the secondary will ensure that we set the common mode of the secondary side to whatever value we want. There is no center tap on the primary side. So it is obviously reference to ground because one of the other terminal is also going to go to ground. And so this is a very simple stack transformer topology in which we have just placed two inductors right on top of each other to implement a one-ish root to transfer. Okay. So now we would use EMX to uh, simulate. So to set up EMX, uh, I assume you would have preferably learned how to set up EMX by now. I will set up uh, EMX here. Uh, so you have to first load the proc file. I assume you would have already loaded the proc file. Uh, I am loading the typical proc file. So, in this case, you just have to enter where the signals are all coming from. You need to, while entering, you need to ensure that the primary is entered first and lay primary followed by the secondary, and later you would just mention the tap. So, I have already labeled these nodes. This is uh, one is in one, other one is in two, then this is, uh, sorry, in one, out one, in two, out two, and the center tap. And the ground is also named, the ground already comes as a default option, and uh, you would have to place a pin. I have done that, and that is na named as ground. And in this, you have to select the type transformer, fit common mode, primary tap and it's non-symmetric okay so once you do that you can run emx 
since I have already run EMX, I won't go further into this. And uh, there is another thing uh, which I want to just point out. While running, you start this from zero and go to several orders of frequency beyond your frequency of interest. For me, the frequency of interest is up to 20 gigahertz. So I will enter 50 gigahertz here. And you can decide the step. Step, uh, step can be as low as say 1 megahertz and you can keep a step of 1 gigahertz also. It's totally your call. I'm setting this. And in the advanced option, uh, I would suggest you to set up uh, press star here. So what this does is that it ensures that all parasitics are taken into account. And all these you can set if you need. Uh, for me there is nothing. And I have already simulated this. And once you simulate, you will get the plots of inductance versus frequency, etc. And if once you select the model, you the EMX itself will generate the transformer model. And you can use this model in circuital applications. You can determine the insertion loss, return loss, etc. Any other parameter of interest for the transformer. Uh, So with that I will stop this video. If you have any questions you can reach out. Thank you.